I mean, this is this might just be personal preference. I know we spoke about this, uh, Jason and I. Having your uh, your declarations all on one line actually causes some issues on a human level. The compiler doesn't care. You can do this. This is completely safe. And something that I thought was kind of funny, I didn't realize, uh, the fact that this serialized field um, is is marking this huge declaration, it actually applies to all of them. So that works. But you're missing a couple things. First of all, for readability's sake, personally, maybe if you had something like an int x, y, so you know maybe you're doing something like int x, y equals 0, Fine, I think that's okay. But when you've got all these named uh, variables, it's my recommendation that you split these up. So, oh, sorry. So I would say, uh, let's see if I can do this in one shot, if it's gonna let me do this. Split into separate declarations. That This is a refactor. Oh. There is a way. Yes, right-click the folder and clean up code namespaces. There's a way to actually... Sorry, I, I, I'm going off on a tangent here. I just read a comment where I can actually... I might actually be able to do the namespacing uh, wh wholesale like I wanted to. But I, I don't want to mess around with that right now. So, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> so, basically, if you check this out, in Rider, you actually get some real nice IntelliSense. For instance, look at this world object. This world field, it actually has this, this inspector, this IntelliSense that tells you what the actual inspector value is. That's pretty awesome. I couldn't do that before when they were all in one row. Look at this, regular ground spawner. It's telling you that if we click on this, it, it takes me right over to where this is and it lets you see what this object is in the inspector. It lets you know that it's actually set. If I were to, let's see if I can do that. Let's say I take this rifle and I, and I clear it. So now it's got nothing, no reference. If we go back, presumably, um, this would eventually reset. Maybe I gotta reopen the, <clears throat> the game manager class. Let me see if that works. Presumably, it's gonna tell you that this is not set. It looks like it's taken a second to update. Maybe I have to actually connect it uh, here or refresh. In any case, it was, it was smart enough to know that when I first opened this, it knew where this was and that this was set. So you get a little bit of IntelliSense there. Let me reset this rifle. <clears throat> that IntelliSense is really nice. So you didn't get that before. Secondly, now I also have the ability to refactor this uh, much easier. I can change these out. You know, if I were to make an actual rifle class or a weapon class, it'd be much easier to go in here and, and change that as opposed to when it was all in one row. So let's hop ahead. That was that was the first refactor I did. And so I'm going to go to my repository and hop ahead to the next revision. So we'll check that out. Let's do a force checkout. <clears throat> now we can see here where I've done that. Also, this is kind of like a, I, I, I tend to follow writer's suggestions for a couple of reasons. One, because if my whole team is using writer and they're using all the default suggestions, then we're all on the same page using automation. But writer suggests, now I'm the kind of guy, by the way, who if I have a private member variable, uh, I always, always put an underscore in front of it. And I do this because when you're down here in a method and I have, let's say I have a var called num equal one, I want to be able to know that if I say my num plus num, that the my num is a private member variable that is not within scope of this uh, method and that num is a variable that is within scope of the method. So this is not a great example because this is very, this is what, like a six line method. But if I had like a 20 line method, maybe like this one down here where I'm referencing my num and num, I want to be able to very easily tell that this particular number does not exist in the scope or was not uh, declared within the scope of my method. So why do I say that? Because you can see here that these are technically private member variables, but we don't put an underscore in front of them. A writer will suggest to you not to put an underscore in front of them. And I am... I'm in favor of this because <clears throat> they're not, it's like they are private member variables, but they're exposed. So they're kind of a special unique case to Unity where in a way they're sort of public in, in, a, in a very weird, ex implicit or explicit way through the editor. 
So in that case, <clears throat> I try to treat them special. Ryder treats them special. He, it bolds them so they're easier to see. So that's just why I went ahead and removed the underscore from the, the front of these private member variables. But I just wanted to make it clear that I always put a, an underscore in front of my private member variables, and that's why. Listen.